The Japan Meteorological Agency global average surface temperature data for August 2023 has been posted. And as expected, August 2023 was the hottest August month in their data set, which began in 1890. With the August data now in the books, we now know that this was the hottest Northern Hemisphere summer since their record keeping began in 1890. The Japan Meteorological Agency pre presents its global average surface temperature results in an easy to understand manner. The vertical scale in the graph shows the deviation of the average global temperature in degrees centigrade for the boreal summer of 2023. That's the months of June, July, and August. And it does this from a 30 year average of such results obtained between 1991 and 2020. The five warmest boreal summers in their records all have been observed in the past eight years. The summer 2023 anomaly was 0.59 degrees centigrade above the 30 year baseline, which is more than 97% higher than the second warmest boreal summer, which occurred in 2016. It appears that this very sharp increase in Northern Hemisphere summer global average surface temperatures is associated with some significant changes in the Southern Hemisphere as well. This figure from the University of Maine Climate Reanalyzer shows daily near surface average temperatures for the entire world as measured by satellite instruments over the past 43 years. If we focus our attention on the data between June 1st and August 31st, and we look at the dark black line, which shows daily temperatures during 2023, and compare it to the orange line, which shows the daily temperatures during 2022, it's clear that the Earth has been experiencing significantly warmer boreal summer temperatures now than in the past. If we now focus on just the northern hemisphere, we see that the temperature anomaly is present also in the northern hemisphere data. It started off not very pronounced in June 2023, but became quite pronounced in July and August of 2023 and has continued into September. Now focusing our attention on the Southern Hemisphere, we see that the temperature anomaly as shown by the dark black line uh, between June 1st and August 31st is pronounced and appears to be continuing into September of 2023. One factor that may be contributing to this rapid surface warming in the Southern Hemisphere is the recent large scale loss of sea ice in the Southern Ocean. This is causing the Southern Ocean to absorb more of the incoming sunlight, which is leading to more rapid warming in the Antarctic region. Since the oceans of the world form what is essentially a large conveyor belt, warming in the Antarctic region can, can contribute to warming further north by means of the ocean currents, but it takes a long time for water from the Southern Ocean to move into the Northern Hemisphere. So it's it is probably the case that the warming in Antarctica is just another symptom of some change or changes in the global climate system that is causing record high temperatures in the past few months. The dark black dashed line in this chart shows the Southern Hemisphere sea ice extent for 2023 compared to the previous 40 years or so of data. Clearly, the loss of sea ice in the southern hemisphere has been pronounced during recent months. This is quite different than what has been happening in the northern hemisphere, where sea ice extent has been low in recent years, but not anomalous, anomalously so in 2023. Clearly, the Antarctic has been warming relatively fast during this year, and as yet, we don't know why. While we don't know yet for certain all the reasons why we are seeing such record-breaking temperatures this year, it appears that the oceans are playing a major role. As this chart of world sea surface temperatures shows, a major anomaly in sea surface temperatures began in March of 2023 and has continued unabated 
through the summer months and into the fall. Clearly, we are in uncharted territory as far as global average temperatures are concerned, and much more research needs to be done to understand why this is happening. I hope you have found this short video informative. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments section for the video, and I will do my best to answer them. Please also take some time to view some of my other climate-related videos, and if you haven't done so already, I would appreciate it greatly if you would subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching.